In a largely post-Christian secular West, the very idea of religion continuing to exert a meaningful hold in public life is, I think, at least in the European context, not just contested, but actually quite resisted. And we've had one or two examples, and I was just thinking of the other more recent example in Scotland where I live, where recently the Scottish Government is proposing to legalise marriage for same-sex couples. And the Catholic bishops have written, or at least one Catholic bishop has written, saying that the Catholics will no longer vote for the SNP, the Scottish National Party, if this goes ahead. And the kind of furore that this can raise is that why can religion have a public hold? By public, they mean a political hold. Religion is just one voice from a plurality of voices. And religious voices should not be privileged. And all day I've been hearing, to some extent, and in varying shades of nuance, that belief or a theistic belief or, or a theistic grounding or a connection with the transcendent is one way, is different from philosophy, is a different form of lifestyle, is a different way of thinking about the world. And I'm sure people who believe agree with that. But I think in the European context, if we think of the phrase by the French philosopher Gaucher, who said, Christianity proved to be a religion that made it easy to leave religion. Well, that's what's happened in Europe. It has paved the way for ease of leaving from faith. No faith, you can believe whatever you want, you don't have to believe whatever you want. In that context, I think the intellectual discussions and the praxis of religious freedom becomes easy because there are already so many other intellectual freedoms that are circulating. But in societies where you don't have those kind of freedoms, religious freedom is an anomaly to so many people. Why should it be given a priority? Why should it be seen as part of a human dignity? There are so many other things that are a front to human dignity that religious freedom takes a back seat. I'm not saying this is right or wrong. I'm just trying to picture why hasn't it latched on? And I think I would just end by saying that you know, there are not that many places that are safe to talk about religious freedom. We think of academic institutions as safe places for the raising of all sorts of ideas. And that the fact that Georgetown is doing this um, is to be commended. But there are really not that many safe places. Not necessarily because I think, as um, Tom Farr said this morning, that it's not really been taken up by academics. But I think a lot of academics either don't see this as a debate in its own right, or that they are fearful, not so much in the West, but largely across the world where this might lead to. You have to be really brave, and you have to be courageous enough to take risks in your personal life to talk about religious freedom as a universal good for all. Thank you.